All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. All right, I'm going to do a quick video today talking about understanding protections, which helps you as a defensive coordinator trying to figure out which side you're going to pressure from, and I'll go through why we would like to do that. Game Strat, all right, some of our partners, sorry, Game Strat, sideline replay company we use uh, at Bishop Kenny High School. I've used in the last five or six years. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out Game Strat Dome Headwear, the hat company we use with uh, Bishop Kenny High School and play fast football. Uh, if you're looking for customizable hats where you can design a hat, you build a hat, you put it together, you can change the style of the hat, you can change the colors on all the different panels. It can be snapback, velcro, fitted. You can change the front bill. You can put embroidery on there. You are designing the hat. Rather than give your logo to somebody and say, hey, build me a hat, which you could do if you wanted to, if you had an idea for a hat that you thought would be really cool, you can build it on their online hat builder. Every hat is a story. Make sure you check out Dome Hats. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for our uh, practice gear, coaches gear, our sideline gear, game night gear, our uniforms are distributed from them. All right, a lot of our cloth is distributed from them. All right, they're also in the shoulder pad world now with pro gear, so they've got a lot going on. They're big in the baseball world. Make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods Just Play, which is the software we use for our playbooks. A lot of our presentations will be done in Just Play when we are having our team meetings and our offense or our defensive meetings, our install meetings. Uh, it's the best play drawing tool on the market. I use it for my Patreon site and anytime I'm going to speak at a clinic, make sure you check out Just Play. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. You get thousands of reps without needing a partner. All right, so you don't have to worry about spending time telling somebody, here's how you hold a bag, how to hold it, give some resistance. You don't have to worry about the person holding a bag, getting hurt. You can work on striking violently in your weight room or you can set them up all right on the field if you were to build something permanent where they can attach to on the field you can do it in season you can do it off season thousands of reps don't need a partner check out difference usa and then x and o notebook which is a company that makes custom notebooks so you spend all your time organizing your meetings thinking about your meetings and this is what we need to talk about and i want to have a team meeting or i want to have an install meeting and we want to put in our first install and our first formations and our first two runs and our first two passes, why not have a notebook where the players can take notes? Don't rely on them to bring their own stuff in. Don't rely on them, all right, to bring something to write on. Give them a notebook. It has your logo. It could have your schedule on. It could have your mascot, whatever you want, your colors inside. The notebook is set up the way you want it, your templates, all right, how you want to set up the note pages or how they can take notes in there. So if you spend time organizing your meeting and planning your meeting, why not spend some time giving players and coaches something that they can write in so that they can get more out of your meeting. All right, so, you know, one of the things, as defensive coordinators, I think, and I've seen this throughout my career, I think one thing that we need to understand is we need to be able to draw offensive plays, offensive blocking schemes, offensive protections, and we need to be able to understand exactly what the offense is trying to do and why they're trying to do what they're trying to do because it's going to affect our schemes. So, you know, a lot of guys early in their career want to be coordinators and they know a ton about the defensive side of the ball and they're really good on their side of the ball, but then you ask them to draw a power or a counter to different fronts and they don't really know the rules. Well, how would, you know, how would the offense block this front? Or they draw it up and you're like, and you look at it and you say, look, I, I don't know if they're going to block it this way, you know, based off of what I see on, on, on film. Um, or like in pass protection that I'm going to talk about today, I, I don't really know if that's what they're going to do versus that look or that front. Because you want, to, you want to, not only do you have to draw scout cards, not only do you have to be prepared to put your scout team in position so that you can replicate what you need to see, you want to make sure that you are attacking things like pass protections in the proper manner, right? So in general, there are really only two main ways an offense is going to pass protect. They're going to full slide or they're going to half slide. Now, does that mean that there's not other wrinkles built into that? No, that's not what that means. I am saying that in general, there are two main pass protection schemes that you need to learn how to attack, okay? So full slide would be anything where the line works completely in one direction and they put a back on the edge of the other direction, okay? Any team that full slides is probably not gonna free release the back because if they free release the back in a full slide setting, they're unchaining an immediate C-gap defender. They may unchain a third rusher on a team that's dropping eight, right? So anybody that full slides is probably going to put the back on the edge to the other side. 
Okay, so how does that affect your pressure? Well, if your pressures happen to be coming away from the back and they are full sliding, all right, and, and they have the back, let's say, that's, that's off the edge to the other side, all right, if our pressures were coming from the side that they are sliding to, it is a lot easier for them to pick that pressure up and you've got their offensive linemen that work pass protection demeanor, pass protection footwork, eyes in pass protection, body position, all those things, they do that every single day. So I, if I could avoid it, I would love all right, to not blitz my pressure guys into the best pass protectors all right, on the offensive side of the ball and also into what becomes that kind of full zone side, right? That's the full zone side. The movements there should really, if they're a good full slide team, they're going to work on all picking all those things up, just like a team that runs inside zone. Why do you run zone? Because you, know, you can block every front. It's easier to sort out all the post-snap movement. Okay, now I'm not saying that's the only reason, but that's one of the reasons why a team would choose to run zone as opposed to maybe a man scheme or, you know, uh, if they feel better with zone schemes and gap schemes. Zone should be solid against different fronts and movements and pressures because you are sorting it out after the snap, as the play develops. Okay, so you're working on these are accommodations, we're going to work up there, but as soon as it happens and it's fluid and I start to step to where the three technique is and the three tech spikes, now there's going to be a response for me to get ready to handle how the three tech became somebody else's and I've got to go to the linebacker. It's the same thing in pass protection. When they full slide it, they're going to get their feet and their eyes to their gap and they're going to sort out what happens to that zone side. So all these movements that are coming with a long stick and uh, you know the, 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 the will behind it, or even if we tried to pick it, right, or even if we walked up and mugged it and said, all right, look, we're going to bring the will and he's going to go first then we're going to long stick, and then we're going to bring the jack off the edge. Well, when they full slide it, they're going to get their eyes and their feet to the zone side. All right, so when the center goes and he sees, all right, that there's nobody in the A-gap, and he turns his eyes and his feet, and now here comes the long stick coming, it's going to come right back to him. All right, it's going to work right back to him. So we don't really do ourselves, all right, a lot of good sending the pressure to the side that's full zone. All right, now... Do I do it in games? Yeah, I certainly do, because there's times where I want blitzes called to the field or to a certain side, and I'm not worrying about blitzing the protection or what some people would call blitzing the back. But if you were trying to get the best matchups, all right, if you were trying to get the best matchups from a pass rush deal, again, not, not a run blitz, we're talking about a pass rush blitz now. If I brought the same stunt from the other side, I know for a fact that I am going to get my matchup on the back. So I'm going to get one of my blitzers or pass rushers on the back. And I'm trying to get somebody that I think is a better rusher, all right, on the back because that's where the mismatch is. Okay? So again, I'm talking, right now I'm just talking five-man pressures, which means we don't have an extra guy. If they full slide and keep a back in, we're not putting an extra guy, all right? We would have to send seven to get at least one guaranteed free rusher. That's not what we're doing. We're sending five. So I don't know if we're going to get any free rushers, but even if they block it correctly, if I can get the blitz to the side of the back and they full slide, I know I'm going to get at least one rusher on the back. And as a defense, that should be the goal, all right, when you are trying to physically pressure the quarterback. If I want to get home, all right, there's a couple things that I need to do. Number one, if I really want to get home, I better send probably one more than they have because that's the only way I can guarantee I can get a free rusher. What is all the, you know, the trends been the last two, three years in defensive football? Sims, creepers, and other deals. Trying to, all right, trying to see if we can declare the protection, make sure that the offense has to protect a certain way versus that look, and then we're trying to bring people from the other side while dropping the players that were in possibly the mug looks or the pressure looks or dropping a guy off of how they slide the center. Right, and I'll show you that in a second. But the bottom line is, it's trying to get pressure on the quarterback while only rushing four so that I can drop seven. Because the only true way to guarantee you can get one free rusher is you've got to send more than the offense has to block. If they've got six to block and I send seven, I, I'm playing man-to-man -man on the outside. 
All right, a bunch of different ways you could do that to be a little bit more conservative if you wanted. But the bottom line is you're man to man. Right? So if I wanted to play some type of seven man coverage while still getting pressure on the quarterback, the way you do that is by simulating looks to get the offense to protect things you want them to protect while you bring a guy from somewhere else to get a one on one matchup you want. All right, in the NFL, a lot of times when you look at a guy like Aaron Donald, they're going to come up with creative fronts and funky ways to figure out, okay, how to get him one-on-one -on -one with a center or a guard. All right, because most teams in the NFL, they're going to slide to Aaron Donald so that they always make sure they've got help to the side Aaron Donald's on. All right, so they, you know, the Rams and those teams, they would have to come up with funky ways to build fronts in or games in to say, all right, look, they're going to slide Aaron Donald. Let's make sure we eat the slide up so we can get him one-on-one. -on -one. So that now that even though they're sliding that way, the center can't help him. Right? Because most most teams, usually offensive teams will say, all right, well, look, we're going to do it away from the back, away from the field. We're going to slide to the to the field and put the back into the boundary. We're going to slide to the boundary, put the back to the field. Whatever their protection rules are. Well, in the NFL, a game like that, the matchups are so pivotal, teams will slide to the best rusher. All right, to make sure that they get extra eyes and they can help. When it's a four-man rush, if the center doesn't get eaten up by anybody, he's going to go double or knock the, the, the crap out of Aaron Donald every time he tries to make an inside pass rush move. Right? So the Sims, Creepers, and all those deals, they're trying to find a way to rush four and get heavy pressure on the quarterback so we can still play drop seven in coverage. All right? If it was half slide, and I'm sorry, the bell is going to ring for lunch, so if you hear the bell ring in two seconds, bear with me. If the offense was half slide... That means they're going to turn the center. Away from the back. So if it's a half slide team, they're going to turn the center away from the back. If it's an out front, first uncovered, that means that guard's probably going. Now they're going to create this four-man side. They're going to be big on big. And now the back is either going to be free release or he's going to be check down inside outside if it's a six-man protection scheme. So now when we bring that pressure, again, we're trying to make sure that we get at least one guy on the back if he's in protection. Right? So if the back is involved in a protection, we want to get at least one guy on the back. That is our goal. So whether it's half slide or full slide, our goal is to get at least one guy on the back. Let's pressure the guy that doesn't pass protect as much as the offensive lineman. Let's get our matchup where we want to all right, at the same time, if I can get my best pass rusher one-on-one -on -one with a lineman because of the protection, all right, and I can eat the center up when he turns, those are things you need to look at. We're looking for one-on-one -on -one matchups where we can win our best pass rushers on their uh, worst pass blockers, and usually the running back is going to be a worse pass protector than the offensive lineman on. All right, so I hope this video helps you guys out. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a video. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the content. Leave me a message. I will respond to every, every comment that I get. If it's about a video, I'll try and do that video. Remember, Thursday night, clinic, Atavis Football, Scott Lawyer, uh, Director of Analytics, Developing Dominant Tacklers. Email me, sting8740 at gmail.com if you are interested in being a part of that clinic. All right, appreciate everything you guys do for me. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I just beat the bell. See you next time.